Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of OK Zoomer, Zoom interviews with creative engineers and more. I'm your host, Aaron Lichtig, Zometry Guy and former Jeopardy! champion. And today, we're very excited to have with us Nora Torre. Uh, Nora is an additive manufacturing expert, and she's also done great work inspiring women to embrace technology careers within 3D printing. And she founded Women in 3D Printing in 2014. It's a great organization to check out um, to feature women leaders in additive manufacturing. Uh, she got into the field back in 2010 when she was one of the first eight employees at Sculpteo. Uh, she worked there for three years in France, relocated to the United States, first in San Francisco, and now in Denver, where she is the VP of Strategy at Evaldi Group. Nora, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Excellent. So first, tell us about your work at Evaldi Group. Yeah, sure. Um, so I've been with Evaldi Group for two years now. Uh, we've been around for three years. Um, so we're basically uh, providing distributed manufacturing solutions, uh, mostly for heavy industries. Um, so it goes all the way from uh, screening and analysis of uh, procurement data uh, from those heavy industry organizations, uh, all the way to implementing local manufacturing centers. So really the idea is to provide all the tools for them to manufacture as close as possible to where the actual need is, because uh, that's really one of the advantages of 3D printing, right? Um, so we're trying to leverage that. Excellent. And you also lead women in 3D printing. So what mm -hmm. motivated you to start that organization? Yeah, so that was, uh, so back in 2014, um, I had been in the U.S. for two years already. I mean, already not so long, but <laughs> had been in the U.S. for two years. Um, and basically during this time, I was a uh, general manager for uh, Sculpteo U.S. Um, and it was a very interesting time because uh, I was basically setting up the business here. Um, so I was doing a little bit of everything like you know i was the only person here for the us so i was doing sales a little bit of marketing of course i was assisted by the the team back in france but i got to go to all of the trade shows uh, all over the us so really interesting time um but at the same time you know i was so french young and i realized i was female in a male dominated industry uh which never really hit me before um, and so I felt something was wrong, you know, from the experiences I was having, um, being on booth, uh, being the only woman, um, in meetings, uh, and I started talking to other women in the industry and I realized like the common trait we had is not because we're foreigners or young, it was because we were female. Um, and so that got me into the idea of building a uh, woman in 3D printing. Uh, and the first idea, which is, I mean, it still is the, really what, drives women tree printing today is that uh, we're basically featuring our leaders uh, to show everyone who we are, where we're coming from. Uh, and the idea still is to encourage more women, you know, to follow the steps and, and get involved uh, with uh, women in 3D printing. It's a great uh, website and newsletter. So if you want to get involved, please, please visit that site, Google Women in 3D Printing, and you'll find it. Um, now, how did you get involved in additive manufacturing to begin with? How did you end up in that <laughs> career? So I fell into it quite randomly, actually, um, like quite a few people actually in the industry. Um, so I was back in 2010 uh, in France, um, right out of school. I was looking for an internship um, and found this job listing for Sculpteo um, uh, online, uh, applied and got the job. Um, but basically, uh, so uh, my my background uh, at the time I was uh, I was uh, willing to become a lawyer, so I was uh, fresh out of uh, law school. Uh, so again, nothing to do with 3D printing. Uh, when I say randomly, it's really randomly. Um, but I basically had a, an hour and a half interview with Clément, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Sculpteo, and it's only after this well, maybe almost two hours uh, interview uh, that he showed me the printers. I was like, I want to see what it is, you know, <laughs> but you know, I was in the interview, so I couldn't really ask. 
Uh, and at some point he's like, well, you actually want to see the, the machine? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to see the machine. <laughs> and so we go to the second floor, uh, and that's really when I saw it. Uh, it was a Z-Corp. Uh, so that's the first machine I got to see. It was a Z-Corp printing. I don't even know what I was, like maybe figurines. I can't remember. Uh, but that's really when I, I fell into it. You know, I was like, okay, that's awesome. That's really when I got uh, to see the potential uh, this kind of machine could have. That's a great moment. I remember that moment. Zometry has a, a 3D printing facility here in Maryland as well. And that first day you kind of go in there and you see all the big industrial machines working. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, um, you, you've been in this industry for a while and a lot has changed, especially very recently with uh, the, the rise of, of COVID and coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think will change as time moves forward due to the virus so, and also due to other, other trends that you've seen out there in the market? Yeah, so it's true that it's, it's hard to ignore what's going on right now. Um, so you would have asked me this three months ago, I may have had a completely different answer. Um, but I'd say right now, and I feel like all of the COVID-19 3D printing responses really got 3D printing on the map. Uh, that's a way of saying this. Um, yeah. And so unless we mess up with something, you know, uh, there has been like quite a few questions raised about IP issues, like how can the parts be sanitized and all of that, the, the PPE parts, can they be sanitized? And, and so, you know, unless someone dies and we can actually show it's linked to a 3D printed product, which would be awful for the entire industry, I feel like we're on the right track to have a really like, a jump into the adoption of 3D printing, uh, especially in enterprises. Because um, I think it's, again, showing the potential of this technology, uh, things that were obvious to us for, <laughs> for years, you know, how 3D printing can be utilized uh, in, uh, on, on the enterprise level in manufacturing environments. Um, I think people are starting to get it. Uh, and that's probably thanks to COVID-19, even though I hate to think of this crisis in any possible positive way um i still think it's gonna it's gonna help us as an industry if we don't mess up and we continue this great collaboration that's happening uh industry-wise um so yeah i would say it's headed full speed to being adapted widely uh, i mean i will hope so <laughs> i hope it's not just me hoping that's you know <laughs> that, but yeah <laughs> I, yeah, I, I hope so too. And I think it's, it's well on its way to getting there. Now, I, what are some of the most interesting projects you've seen recently, kind of either related to COVID or outside of that? Well, first, I mean, it's hard not to relate it to COVID-19 because, well, yeah. what we've seen is, uh, is unprecedented, like in, in, in the scale of it and the, the responses we've seen through 3D printing, uh, if we were to talk just about additive manufacturing. But uh, so... So we've had a wonderful work of collaboration. Um, and that for me is like by itself an amazing project, you know, uh, I've got to see. And I'm, I'm really glad I'm already in this industry to witness this because uh, we've seen the, sorry about that. Uh, the, I don't know if you're, <laughs> my son is banging on the door. I guess we all used to work from home now and comes with <laughs> some. They, 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 their sounds appear often on this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, uh, so yeah, so it's hard to, to not um, take into account what's going on right now uh, with this collaborative work. That being said, uh, so pre-COVID-19, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm biased here, but I, I want to mention something we did with Ivaldi Group, because uh, uh, that to me was a really cool project. Uh, it might not be the most sexy project I've worked on, but really one of the coolest ones. Uh, so we basically delivered uh, scrubber plugs um, to merchant vessels. So scrubber plugs are here to um, close uh, draining holes on vessels, uh, so basically to make sure they don't sink, uh, <laughs> more or less. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it has this importance. Uh, and so there are a few issues with the conventional parts. You know, it's like uh, multi-component parts. Uh, they're made out of brass. Uh, so thieves can take them because brass is, has high value on the black market. Um, so a bunch of issues with conventional parts. So we've simplified the parts, made them out of polymers, and we basically now have a bunch of scrubber plug going around uh, in all all, you know, merchant vessels, so going around uh, in the Pacific. So it's, it's a really cool project to think that we have parts uh, that we made uh, that are actually being used this way. So being involved with this was super cool for me. That's awesome. 
Now you've, you know, you described that experience seeing the printers for the first time and you've from that moment come a, a very long way in your, your knowledge of the industry and knowledge of additive. What advice would you have for someone who you know, wants to go on that same journey, wants to get into the industry and, and learn more about it? So I'd say either it's going to be random, you know, you're just going to find a, <laughs> a job opportunity and, you know, you, you find a machine super cool, like, you know, you, you think like you, you, you're driven by this, so you go for it. Um, or you actually want to get into this industry and you don't necessarily know how to start. So uh, I'd say there is no perfect moment. Um, too many times I've seen uh, people, I would say women, especially from my experience, who are waiting for the perfect moment. So uh and so there is no perfect moment really to to have a, a shift in your career like and do what you actually want to do and what you love so and i think covid 19 is actually showing it everything can go upside down <laughs> really quickly uh so there's really no time to waste uh, that being said you were i think your question is more about advices on how to how to get started um so i think gross the internet it's crazy how much information you can find today it's actually overwhelming um so that might actually be the issue a few years ago the problem was there wasn't enough uh, good content about 3D printing. Now maybe we have too much content. So I'd say to find valid information, do your own validation, you know, uh, play around with the machine, the materials, the software, break the machine, uh, maybe not industrial grade machines, uh, <laughs> maybe not right away, uh, but you know, have your own experience of 3D printing. I think that's really important. Um, and then, how to connect maybe with the you know with the community i think connecting with people is really important uh i mean the, there is a ton of virtual event happening right now so and we are quite welcoming industry i think i'm even going to use the word community um and so you know if, if you're new to do printing it doesn't matter hop on the happy hour a virtual happy hour and chat away people are you know will be welcoming you for sure that's great advice. Well, Nora, thank you for joining us today. It was great Thanks. to have you here. Um, everyone, you can follow Nora on Twitter at Nora3DP. You can also follow Women in 3D Printing at WI3DP. Um, and please check out the, the Women in 3D Printing website as well. Um, we will be back with another episode of OK Zoomer uh, over the next couple of days. Thank you, as always, for watching.